Hello guys, welcome back to another book recommendation. Today we're going to take a look at this book and a few others. And this one is by P.T. Barnum, The Art of Money Getting. And it's from the end of the 1800s. And it's a very simple book. It's also very short and you don't have to buy it because it's in the public domain. So I'll just uh, link to a website that has the full book. And it's very simple and it'll tell you what you already know. But well, that doesn't mean it isn't important and you might not be following it if you're like pretty much everyone else. It's about how to get rich, basically, in the well-known and very slow way. What Einstein called the eighth wonder of the world, compound interest. So the basic concept is that you save before you spend, no matter how much you make. So if you make a little, you'll save a little. And if you make a lot, you'll save a lot. And then you just let the compound interest do the work for you. And it's easier than it's ever been. Well, it's not really, it's practically easy, but <laughs> emotionally hard to do. And he has some great examples in it, why it's hard to do emotionally. Because of course you want to spend the money now. The definition of investing is uh, giving up some purchasing power now so that you can have more later. And we all have an urge to spend right now and not defer to later. <laughs> So the first thing he says to avoid is also pretty simple and you know it already. Don't get in debt. If you have debt, you wake up poorer than you did when you went to sleep. And the guy that lent it to you will wake up richer than when he went to bed. So don't have any debt, especially not one with a high interest and especially not one that compounds. Or you'll have the wonder of the eighth world working against you instead of for you. And he has a great image of that. He calls it paying for a dead horse. <laughs> like. If you borrowed money to go out and get a really uh, expensive horse carriage, well, then today it would be a car, obviously, but um, after five years, you haven't paid off the debt. It's still working against you, but the horse carriage is not that nice anymore and maybe it's falling apart. Or if you borrowed to get clothes and now the, the clothes is all worn and washed out, but you're still paying off the debt, all kinds of stuff like that. So those two items are pretty simple. Save before you spend. Don't get in debt. So what's the third? And then we just move on to uh, this book. Uh, that's Warren Buffett. You probably already know him. Most famous investor ever. Through an uh, entire lifetime has consistently beaten the market. And what he says is uh, basically you just take an index fund. That could be Vanguard if you're living in the United States with an extremely low cost percentage which for Vanguard will be much less than half a percent. So if you ask Warren Buffett, he'll just tell you to take what you saved that month and put it in an index fund. In fact, he made a bet. He bet some hedge funds that they, because of their costly administration, could not make returns that would beat just the S&P 500 invested in an index fund. So they bet a million dollars for charity. And in the beginning, the hedge fund was in front, but now his uh, S&P index fund is actually in front of the hedge fund. So that's just following the market. And what you can expect in return from the market is about 6% a year. Obviously, you're not going to get them looking like 6%, 6%, 6%. You know, it'll, like when we had the, the crash in uh, 2008, you would be looking at minus 50 <laughs> the first year and minus 30 the next and minus 25 the next and so forth. And then all of a sudden it'll start going up and now you're lo looking at plus 30% or something like that. So it will average out over many, many, many years. And the only way you can lose that bet if you have an index fund just following the market is if the American GDP starts <laughs> never increasing and growing, which obviously will never happen. So the world has to end or you'll make money if you're just invested in all of American businesses. So how much is that? If you have $100,000 now in principle and you put in $60,000 a year, you would have a million dollars after 10 years at 6% compounded interest. Not exactly 1 million, but pretty close. And those are big numbers, but you can try and do the same with just if you have a principal of $20,000 now or $10,000 now and you put in five or 10 a year and then do the math on that, then you would still have a significant amount of money and no debt to boost. So what are the pitfalls of that simple equation? Because there are pitfalls. Well, the pitfall is taking money out or stopping putting money in. And I know this because I tried to do it. 
when I uh, finished law school in 2006, all of a sudden made a lot of money and I put them all <laughs> into stocks. Actually, it was index funds. And then the market crash happened. Uh, pretty much my entire life savings <laughs> lost 50% in a year. And that's pretty detrimental to, <laughs> to, to your happiness when you look at your portfolio. And what happened was that I never sold a stock. So that part I got right because I made the money back and more, much more on top of that afterwards till this day because obviously the market is much better shape now and if you put in money four years ago you've made a lot of money but i didn't put any money in so that means when stocks was absolutely cheap in 2008 when warren buffett started picking up stops like with reckless abandon i didn't put any money in there because i was i was too sad about the ones that i already lost so i didn't realize now the stocks were extremely cheap and just keep putting in money because of course you have to keep putting in money because it'll average out over time. So I put in money when they were most expensive and I didn't put any in when they were cheapest. So it didn't average out for me, but I still made a pretty good return on investment by keeping all of the stock until now. And I still have them, by the way. So this strategy absolutely works as long as the American GDP keeps going up, it keeps growing, and of course it will unless the world ends. But you do have to have the stomach to never take the money out. And the best way to really do that is to make sure you have a cash buffer. And obviously you want to get rid of all of your expensive debt first before you invest anything because that's a guaranteed return to just get rid of debt. So my personal strategy now is I keep enough cash around that if my car breaks down, I can just buy a new one in cash. And in that way, I'm never really tempted to take money out of the stock market. And I'm also not going to be forced to do it because that really is the first key. You don't want to take it out again once it's put in unless you're picking stocks yourself, which is a completely different animal. I'm not going to talk about it here, but if you want to pick stocks yourself, you'll do very well to read this book and also to read everything else about Warren Buffett and to watch tons of YouTube videos where he's talking about it because uh, it's very simple how he does it. Of course, it's extremely hard to apply it, but it'll give you some, some fantastic pointers on what to look for, like uh, like looking for companies that really have a, a great moat around them in the competitive advantage. So they'll be here in 20 or 30 years, almost certain of it. But of course, you will have to sell them if something fundamental changes and you will have to watch it. So if you don't want to do investing on your own, just buy an index fund and put in money every every month or every second month, or every third month. But the first thing is really also the hardest thing to do. You have to save every month, no matter how much you earn really. So if you if you can save a hundred dollars to that, if you can save a thousand dollars to that, if you can find if you're really well paid, you can save ten to that. It's not a very sexy way to get rich, but it's uh, the most guaranteed way to get rich. We all want it the sexy way. We want to uh, create a new company. It'll go like this: the hockey stick, and <laughs> we'll send it, and we'll sell it for a hundred million. And of course, it's not going to happen. Well, for a few people, it will, but not for very many. Just as you are not likely to, within three years, when you start working for Coca-Cola, to become the CEO. <laughs> you can get rich that way. So you might as well just save and put in the money. And of course, it's hard to do because we want to spend it now. We don't really want to defer our spending 20 or 10 years. Some people, this will uh, probably be a uh, second nature to them. And for other people like me, it really isn't. It's something you have to discipline yourself about. And you also have to go through a lot of experiences to actually find out that this is the way to do it. And to get control enough of your emotions, both the impulses to spend and also the impulses to withdraw stock from the, a falling market and not realize that now they're cheap, so you should put in money and stuff like that. So get started now. Don't ever take the money out if you have them in index funds and make sure you have a cash buffer so you're never really tempted to take them out and make sure you don't have any debt because that's the eighth wonder of the world working against you instead of for you. So I'll link some videos where Warren Buffett is giving lectures. He's 86 now. He's given tons of lectures and they're all very good and you should at least listen to a few of them and probably more times than one so it really drives home. And read P.T. Barnum as well. I'll link to that as well. It's free. You can just read it on the internet. Uh, there are tons of books giving you this recipe but you might as well take it from the one of the richest men in the world who's practiced it his entire life. He started with $10,000. And a guy that lived 100 years before that and said the exact same thing. The way I view this personally is that I want to save something up every month so I don't fall into the complete consumption trap. But I also don't want to save up so much that I have to count every penny because that would be detrimental to uh, to my 
life value or enjoyment of life, you might say. So I don't want to defer all spending. Warren Buffett likes to say that doing something now that you don't like, like working a job that you don't like, is like saving up sex for old age. It doesn't really make any sense. So don't defer all spending to, to old age, but defer some so you can make compound interest work for you and you'll be much better off than pretty much every one of your peers that don't have the discipline and experiences that you will get from this to actually do it. It's the most safe way. Actually, it's pretty much guaranteed, barring a nuclear strike on America, that you will get rich doing this. So if you have a low income, it might be not drinking too much coffee at Starbucks. If you have a high income, it might be getting a BMW instead of a Porsche. And to be honest, no matter what your income is, you can always find things that you don't really need that really doesn't add that much to, uh, to how well, to how good you feel about your life. There really is no reason to keep up with the Joneses. Don't fall into the trap and put everything you earn into consumption. It doesn't matter how much you earn if you spend all of it. Of course, you'll also be putting uh, funds into, uh, into your pension, but you're not going to get at them until very old. So it's better to have that buffer of uh, personal wealth early so you can do what you want you're not pressured into stuff you get to be the master of your own economic situation and it'll also provide you an income that is not dependent on your first occupation so start with these books you can either get uh, P.T. Barnum or you could do uh, The Richest Man in Babylon which is pretty much the same concept just save before you spend and find some golden middle way that you can uh, actually do for the rest of your life with that and then just listen to Warren Buffett and he'll tell you to put the money in an index fund and leave them alone don't even look at it just put it in every month or every second month or whatever you want to do leave them there no matter what's going on in the markets and you'll make money from corporate America as the GDP increases and it grows every year and you can expect 6% in annual return on your investment at count and that'll compound over time to be an amazing amount of money. Of course, you have to deduct uh, taxes and inflation from that number. So it's not quick, at least in the beginning, but it actually will speed up. The snowball will get bigger and bigger and yeah, it'll get really big in the end and go much faster. And if you really get into the idea of it and you want to uh, pick a little bit of stock yourself, which I really do not recommend unless you actually start out with the index idea first and and get your uh, your feet wet maybe you could play around with 10 percent of the portfolio and pick some stocks just to keep yourself interested in it but then i would uh, really uh, suggest that you do go back and read everything buffett's ever written and and watch some of those youtube videos that he's done where he gives interviews on how to do these things now the dog barking in the background is max my rottweiler please shut up i think maybe it's the postman I did order some books. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments. And uh, there's tons of other investing books that I could recommend to you. But uh, I figured these two uh, probably where anyone really should start if they're new to it. Oh yeah, you could also pick up this one. Which is basically a compilation of uh, Warren Buffett's shareholder letters, where he's very frank about everything, both the economy and his own investing principles and the principles of Berkshire. So go forth, get rich very slowly, <laughs> but rich nonetheless. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you all next time.